Um, I've been involved in other light machines for a while, so I've got quite a broad ex you know, knowledge of how light machines work and what they do. So it's, um, this is the Lucia light machine, Lucia number three. Um, comes with a notepad book like this, you can't do anything else on it, it's just basically for uh, creating, creating programs and playing them. It does come with a separate mouse, as in not a, an actual animal mouse, but when you click. So you can have it next to you and you can just press like uh, play and stop and start. But because it's got halogen uh, light in the center of the LEDs, so these are LEDs here. So it has eight LEDs, uh, all across. So they all flicker individually. So you imagine it when it comes on, I'll show you a bit of an experience uh, soon, but just show you, so you know more about what it does, etc. So all the LEDs, they, they strobe at certain frequencies, mainly beta frequencies to get you quite a lot of visuals but uh, the Lucia now has software which enables you to, to play around with like binaural beats and frequencies. So you can enter in different states of consciousness. So just like how binaural beats work in a sense is that they work with a frequency, um, like a constant like frequency uh, to entrain you, but it's more better described like isochronic tones, like a shamanic drum beat, like, like I was saying. When it's like drummed, it's like dun, dun, dun. After a while you start, in entrancing yourself and getting into a trance. So they call that entrainment, if it's to do with like brainwave or, or light frequency. So light has been around for many, many years, um, you know, for many, many years, like thousands of years. And the first light machine was basically this handheld fan with the sun. And you were saying about the roller coaster in like Fort Park, or was that somebody else? Was that you? Somebody else. Oh, that was somebody else, sorry. You know, sun gazing. Yeah, sun gazing. Alton Towers, you were saying. Oh, no, no, what was sun gazing? I sun was gazing. Oh, yeah, yeah, but you were in, yeah, but so. I was wherever I was, yeah, yeah. So you were getting visuals. But the first light machine came about where there was um, like a, a handheld fan, and you would spin it. Yeah. And because of the, t -t 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 -t, you know, from the fan, you'll get this rippling effect and you get some visuals. Yeah. But because. Imagine that like eight what times was faster. Invented by a couple of guys. Uh, yeah, a neurologist and a scientist. Yeah. So they've both had near death experiences in, in their lives and um, they wanted to recreate the, the tunnel effect of, of light. Um, so this is their third prototype. They now have four. They have a more of a portable version, yeah. which is a bit more cheaper. I think it's about 6,000 euros. Um, so it's a bit more portable, still pricey, but it's the technology that, that's behind it, the software. You know, you could create a, an LED light machine yourself, you know, very easy, but it's the software behind it that takes much longer to, to do. So entrainment works by entraining your brain with rhythms. So at the moment you listen to me, you're in beta. Um, and a lot of the visual stuff, which this does, so it's a very like a psychedelic light machine. So when you're under it, you see, vi like you see patterns, colors, uh, all sorts of crazy things so going on. Yes. It's not the same. I, I have taken stuff before, uh, you know, to, to, to know what it's about, but I'm not interested in that anymore. It's just, it's one-off experience. But for me, they're totally, completely different. So you can't say it's like a psychedelic experience, but if you've never taken anything before, there's anything you can describe it as. It's, if you remember the, the kaleidoscopes when you were younger, the, like the tubes and yeah. you would, it's like that, but a lot more, it's in your, it's more in your mind rather than looking at something far away, it's the only way to describe it. So with each LED, they flicker at certain rates all individually, so it's really good. No, all the other light machines don't do that, they're, they're more sequences. So this is why it makes it a lot more bubbly and a lot more playful. So the geometry is here with the cross patterns, and because they're flickering in and out, you get this, this geometry going on. But my research with uh, people, I did a, a weekend with 40 people, uh, doing four different brainwave frequencies on, on the light machine as well as using other different programs and every person saw the exact same different thing. So 40 people experienced the same program all seeing a completely different thing. So whatever's taking a place on a light machine, everyone sees their own unique experience. That's what's uh, beautiful about it. So you'll have um, one program which might be a relaxation program, might be traumatic to somebody else, for example, not that saying that happens, because we're all wired differently. You know, the light machine isn't for everybody. In the wrong hands, it can be a bit dangerous because of, you know, history of epilepsy with people or yeah, light sensitivity. Yeah, yeah. My mum, who went first of it, first of all, she had to be five meters away from the actual face of it. It was just so intense. And even that was turned down. Uh, the, the brightness was completely turned down. 
now she's a, she can handle it a bit more. She's got a bit more attuned to it. But um, yeah, I mean, light frequencies have been around for since you probably remember. You just not don't realize it. TVs are flickering at a certain rate. And this is why they call it programs, because you're programming, you know, conspiracy stuff. But they say they've made you absorb into the program by the certain flicker rate of the TV, the old fat screen TVs, that is. Um, light bulbs or bayonet ones uh, go at a certain rate, like 40 hertz. And that's more like gamma to keep you more awake. If it was a different spectrum, which was flickering, it would probably entrain you. So the entrainment is, again, like the shamanic drum beat a bit like binaural beats, where in Delta at sleep you have this sort of tone. With uh, a light that's on, you just, it's, no, it's, no, it's just a hum. Mm. So you don't have, it's like the fluorescent tubes you're saying in your fish tank, you know. You just have this constant uh, light taking place. Um, so yeah, I'll show you, I've got, the, I've got a t-shirt so it's not too bright so you can see what's going on. Um, so you can load, you can create your own programs, um, or sessions, they call sessions on here. They have from easy, medium to strong, and they have all sorts of like genres, like folders, such as like psychedelic, uh, Kabbalah, hypno, dimensions, and uh, they all do different things, uh, just different patterns and different durations of time. Yeah, if I if I wheel if you if I wheel the chassis of this a bit, <laughs> a bit more closer to you guys, yeah, you're. Yeah, it will do. You can get four or five people under this uh, if it's high enough as well. Um, it's difficult with the back side of this because it's, it's in the way. Yeah. But other light machines you can suspend and point down vertically and you can get four or five, you know, six people under it. And you can have a slight experience. That's better, you know. A direct personal experience straight away, it's like always monitor people because, you know, you have to know that you, you, any light sensitivity beforehand, you know, if you were to buy any light machine, it's in your own hands and you'll make sure that people you put under it, you got to be careful. My, my dog, he used to love it. He used to get very jealous. So I used to go under the bed and he'd be like crying at the door, I open up the door and he would just jump on the bed and just close his eyes. He used to love it. Really? Yeah, he was just loved the light machine. But again, you don't know what, what's going on there. They probably, you probably just like the visuals. I know they see colours different than us, yeah. but I don't know what he was seeing, but he loved it. <laughs> I left him on his own before. He was just like happy under it, you know? Wow. So I didn't force him to like, get under. He just wanted to go under. Yeah. He copied a lot of things I did. So it can get a bit warm if you're really close because it's a halogen light and say these are all uh, LEDs and there's a center fan. So when I put it on, you're going to hear it, you know, start up, etc. So this one's called Stargate. It's just what they name programs. Um, so I'll turn on the brightness first, just so you can have a look. And it'll probably be quite bright when it comes on. It takes a few seconds. Um, and none of you are light sensitive or anything, are you? No. No? Okay. No, Everyone is different. So first of all, the center halogen will come on, like so. And I'll just show you first of all how it works and then I'll give you a bit of a taste, uh, close the curtains and you'll all have a bit of an experience and see. So I'll start up and you'll start to see the, the lights come on. But I'll just put this over so you can see what's taking place. And then when you go under it, you'll be able to see the difference because what's going on here, there's no coloured lights. No. So it's a bit like when you shine um, light for a prison, you get all this different colours, a bit like on the Pink Floyd album, you know that prison going on. So yeah. I'm not, you know, it is generally, it's all white light there. I just want to direct it in your eye, eyes open at the moment. But that's what you can see is, is taking place. Um, they do change, like that's the beginning of the program. And there might be just these two on or these two and they, they strobe at different rates, basically. Some people have had out bodies with it um, or they got deeply relaxed. It's obviously, you know, about DMT, the of tryptamine, uh, the compound in, you know, located inside your brain, it's there as like your ejector seat, you know, if anything was like a near-death experience to happen, it's released instantly for you to come out. So it's kind of like, this isn't natural. <laughs> what we're doing here is technology. And it's, um, it's probably tricking your mind to think that you are having an experience somewhat because people ex experience having near-death experiences um, or, or going into the light, seeing this light portal, you know. I'm trying not to word it not too scary for you, but it's the only way 
you know, the inventors of this did have near-death experiences and it transformed their lives that they wanted to recreate something that would, I don't know, give an experience to people. Well, this is the thing, like, doing my research with different programs and making them, like, I'll be inside all day trying to, you know, do different frequencies and different programs and um, then I'm going under it and I'm not getting anything, no, no patterns and colours. So when we first got the machine, we thought there was something wrong with it. They thought, great, we've bought, bought this machine and now it's broken, you know, it's not doing what it's supposed to do. But that wasn't the case. The thing is, I think it's draining something like visually, like we need natural light. This, regardless of any technology that comes out, there's nothing that can reproduce natural light. Yeah. So it's almost like you go outside, you get recharged. So when I was making programs, um, when I was making programs inside like, all day, tweaking around and I had a go shortly, I was like, nah, it's not the same. And I just was unhappy. I was like, I've lost the visuals, I don't know what's happened. Go out for a walk in the sun, come back and like, have a go. I'm like, wow, that's like amazing. So it's something like it's been recharged. So I recommend if you are to get one or have a go or, or, or borrow one, like rent one out that you have a go. Yeah, you can, um, you can rent some of them out. Um, and uh, maybe just research the different light machines, basically, and what they do. Yeah, I know Graham. Yeah. I think he's made one or something. He's got something. Possibly, I'll have to speak to him about that. Some kind of machine or something that he's invented. There might be goggles because goggles have been out for for many years, and it's just like sunglasses with LEDs in, tiny, and they yeah, you put them on. Yeah, but they're not the same. Like the lamps are a lot more powerful experience, so you get more fractals and colours and okay. yeah, quite a beautiful experience. Um, but yeah, if you were to have a go and purchase one yourself uh, or, you know, borrow one or whatever, then um, basically you don't want to be on it all day because it's not dangerous. Is the fact that you start to lose the colours yeah. and that's, that's all. That's the downside to it is that if you go in it five, six times a day, which you're not recommended to do anyway because you're doing other things, yeah. But you start to think, oh, it's not so good. But you have a few days off and go out in the sun, come back and like, wow, it's amazing. So first time ex people who experience light machines the very first time are blown away because, um, yeah, it's, it's changed a lot of people's lives, light. It, you know, it does. If you think about countries like Norway who have a lack of light and, you know, the suicide rates and depression there, it's this, you know, light machines are also a good backup as a, um, as a satellite, basically. You know, they're giving you a bit more of that extra light in your life. Mm -hmm. You know, I used to try and have candles around, but even that's not the same. So having access to a light machine, you know, can really transform you. So there's hundreds of different programs on, 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 on the device, uh, on the laptop. And um, it's all done by Bluetooth, so it's all sent. They're yet to make a, a portable handheld device, uh, sorry, um, like an app that goes on your phone, which you, you can control. Mm -hmm. And I mean, this arm doesn't need to be there. You can always like have the same connection and just have some sort of clamp or something. But the company needs to create something that will, will do that, be a bit more portable, which they have created. But it's more of a, a desktop version with a, a stand. So you can't really put it on like a tripod or anything. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, it's... Uh, it, I find it a bit more difficult to use the software on this than, than the Pandora Star. Um, the Pandora Star is a lot more easier to, to set up and easier, but I say the experience on this is a lot more profound. Mm -hmm. So you went, so it does. Oh, you're not taking anything. You're not, yeah. It's not doing any harm. It's just fun. It's interesting. I need to study these programs more, but th they do change. I mean, you know, center halogen comes on and off. I mean, you know, you can see it is a bit, can be a bit bright. Yeah. Is that too bright for you? No, that's fine. Is that, can you see that all right? Yeah. yeah. It's fine. Okay, so I'll keep it like that then, just in case it was blinding you. But yeah, so that's on the lowest, brightest setting, just so you can see. Um, so yeah, all flickering at different rates. And um, I mean, the center halogen gets quite warm, but these do change. Sometimes these, these ones aren't on, for example, they all change independently. Um, but yeah, tons of different programs. And um, yeah, it does you know, many different things. I leave it going for another minute or so you, can, so you can see. But as you can see, there's just white light taking place. There's no color at all. But when you go under it, as, as you explained, the other, the other one, white has many different colors in there. You know, it's like if you look at standard LED 
uh, like well, spot lamps, you turn it to the white, you see a bunch of different colors come out. It's not just standard white. Um, but yeah, it's uh, rechanged the life of a lot, lot of people. One lady who went under it, it transformed her life so much positively that she doesn't ever want to go under it ever again in case she's scared of reversing the effects. What did it do for her? It just, she became more rich, she had a better job, a better love life, and uh, changed her whole life around. Yeah, like after that session, it completely changed her. And she was just like, I don't ever go under it again in case it's like kryptonite to me, you know? It's like, it changed me completely around the other way. So um, I can understand that. But I get people who, you know, want a more deeper experience, much longer. You know, they want to hire it for like, you know, ages. And I say, well, just step by step, you know? Yeah. It's, every, again, everything in balance. Um, but yeah, this was the first of its kind. And then after that came other light machines. And this has been traveling around like Thailand, which is where the Ajna light came from and, and introduced. So it's, uh, yeah, it's a good. Yeah, so they are expensive. As I said, it's the software that goes behind it that really does stuff because it's the different frequencies. And me playing, uh, creating frequencies and programs, I know that it's between like uh, 12 hertz up to like 26, 27, 28 hertz. That's the peak zone when you get visuals. So when I first got the light machine and I was like, yeah, I'm gonna make the best program ever. I had everything maxed up to a hundred and I just like on. <laughs> Cause it wasn't flashing, it wasn't strobing. It was just like a normal light. So I ended up calling that light like lamp. <laughs> Cause it was just like yeah. in your emergency, you want to turn, turn on lamp and the power cut. Cause um, this doesn't run on 12 volts. This runs on 240, but the Pandora Star runs on 12 volts. So got a portable battery pack so if I ever need a lamp it's just very very handy but um, yeah they're great to journey with I mean that's why we have the chase lounges in there in the gone bath one that you didn't find comfortable because your arms were were down yeah. but it's, it's a good position because you just you just get lost and relax yeah, into it like um, I think that's everything really it's just uh, the frequencies are you know at the moment it's, it says it's on 16.9 19 uh, frequencies on here, um, but this is a, a program called Stargate, so it's not it's not really showing you much. I say I should know uh, more, but I'll try a different program so you can see. But yeah, that's that's pretty much all it does. But even if you go on the same program every time, every time you go on, go on the same program, it's different every time. You'll see a completely different thing. Mm -hmm. um, I have made a few programs on the Pandora Star, like uh, Spongle, for example, which is from a band. Have you heard of Spongle? That's a magic mushroom, isn't it? So, <laughs> the name of the band. Yeah, that's yeah. right. I, I don't know, probably. Yeah. Um, but it's like a feeling. It's they got very trippy music, so I mixed my own track of my favourite stuff from theirs, and I spent ages going through every single f sequence. So every bit of bass and um, like a drum beat or whatever, it, it made the light flicker. And when it came to more of a like a a mushroom voice like sound. I, I, I did it so it's like rippling. So it's a really good um really good program. I haven't got it on this one, it's on the Pandora Star. But um yeah people people love that because it goes light and sound. They have more of a deeper experience and they feel like they're really having a mushroom trip. <laughs> but that's what attracts a lot of people with the light machines because they want a succulent experience without the twelve hour long uh, effects of having LST or something. Wow. Yeah, LST can last like 12 hours. Would you get like a headache after that? Actually the opposite, it helps with headaches. So if you have a headache, uh, I'm still learning about why this happens. Like, not headaches, but how it affects it. I think what it's doing is it's igniting so much more neurons and conduct connectivity in the brain. That's just waking everything up. And that's why you see different colors as well. Your, your brain is interpreting all this light frequencies and, and information into pictures and, um, and colors. But you have your eyes closed at the same time. I say this is on the lowest setting and it's quite far away at the moment. So you could, it's probably strobing a little bit at you, but it's yeah, not it's doing right. much. Yeah, you can see a bit of an effect if you don't look at it directly. Yeah, yeah. For you, it's kind of pulsing now. Yeah, there you go. But when I turn it up bright, you'll get more of an effect. But I'll turn it off and I'll move it closer mm -hmm. and give you all guys an experience. You should, if it's a bit more closer, like here, you should be able to see something. Um, I say there are more portable versions, which are the goggles, like Laxman, there's um, the, the Proteus. No, they're about 
two or three hundred pounds. Um, the Casina, which is a good one, which you can put any music in there and it'll strobe with the music that you got. So if you have a, like gong, gong music for example, gongs have a very low, low tone. So if you have some gong music recorded on there, it'll, it'll just strobe at, at the rates of very deep tones, those pulses per, per minute. So if you have a isochronic tone MP3, that's like a, say like a drum beat, which is entrainment, you'll get that with the lights, which is doing something very similar as well. It's got a double the effect of it all, not it? Yeah, yeah, definitely. It's quite exciting. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's probably more I can probably give you a better moment, keep it short and sweet, and that's kind of the end of the program. So there you go, this is a demo program. That's on. There you go. So if I move it closer, you... Yeah.